Most digital creators are used to using their softwares with just their laptop, but there's something about having tactile physical controls that makes the creative process more enjoyable and more importantly, faster. And that's where today's product comes in, the Loop Deck CT, an amazing editing console that adapts to your software and enhances your workflow. So in today's video, we're going to go through how the Loop Deck CT fits into my editing workflow, how you can customize it to work for you, then we'll walk through some real world examples and then answer the ultimate question, does this really speed up your workflow? Let's get into it. So if you've never heard of the Loop Deck CT before, it's a premium editing console that works with a bunch of different software from Final Cut Pro to Premiere to DaVinci Resolve, Lightroom, Photoshop, Apoton Live, which is like an audio editing software, a bunch of different streaming platforms. It even works to navigate just your basic stuff in Mac OS. And then it even does much more than what I just mentioned because they have this thing called Loop Deck Marketplace, which is essentially like an app store where you can go and download profiles for other their software as well. For me personally, I'm going to be showcasing how I use it in Final Cut Pro for things like editing and color grading. Now you can tell this is a really premium product. The build quality actually feels really good. And another key plus is that it is so small and lightweight that this is something that you can travel with once it is that you get used to it because you could just pick it up and it will fit into almost any camera bag. So in terms of the way the Loop Deck CT is set up, the features are set up in this way here. I just opened up Final Cut Pro because that's again where I primarily shoot in here. As you can see here, you have three knobs along each side. Each of these knobs have two functions where you could press and then you can also turn to do a particular action and all of those are fully mapped there then in the middle right here all of these are touch screen and you could swipe so if i come into editing here you could swipe across those to get different options and all of this is customizable there as well if i come back out here i press that to come back to the main screen in final cut pro it's set up there just basic for your editing color and audio there and then the star of the show right here is going to be the scrub wheel slash jog wheel there you have it here and the cool part about this is that you have the functions of the wheel right here but then you can also customize it to where you could do different things so if i swipe in the middle here it brings me to like press play record if i swipe over it gives me a mouse pad if i swipe back over to this function which is the one i primarily use you can also tap in the top and in the bottom there to fine tune how fast you want the jog wheel to work when it is that you're scrubbing through things now to be honest with you when loop deck reached out to me and asked me if i wanted to review this unit i was a little bit skeptical because i already have my hotkeys in final cut pro that i use religiously there but I can say after using it for a couple of weeks, it really does help to speed up the workflow. The key point to that is that you do need to customize it to your particular likes there. And then once you have that, the fact that you have everything here just at the touch of a hand makes things easy and speeds up the workflow in terms of not having to press like multiple different keystrokes. So let me actually go into some of the small customizations that I made to fit my workflow and then we'll jump into some of the real world examples. So one of the first things I wanted to change here in this little box right here, it comes stuck where if you press it, it would select the braid tool, but then you'd still have to press it on the mouse pad there. And I just want it to blade at playhead. So if I come in the Final Cut Pro box here and I say blade at playhead, I could just drag and drop that onto there. The other thing that was important to me is when it is that I am selecting clips in Final Cut Pro, you'd come up here and this is the screen that you're in. And while it could drop at the actual playheads, but that's not what I want. I want to want to just drop it at the end of the timeline, no matter where the timeline is there. The shortcut key for that is E. So if I come back into the loop deck thing here, we can create custom action keyboard shortcut. We are gonna say append to end and then if i come in here it's going to say letters and i want to do the letter e if i save that you see it pops up on here and now it is right here on this button and now if i come in in and out if i just press this button right here it drops that there at the end of 
my timeline there for me, which is perfect. So those are little customizations that you need to go ahead and make. And as I mentioned there, you need to figure out the way it is that you edit. Let me show you how that all kind of fits together here. So this is an edit that I've been working on again. I can use the scrub wheel here to fine tune and scrub. I like that there. I will do four to select my in and then I'll use a scrub wheel. That looks good. I will use five to select my out. And as I mentioned, I will just drop that onto the timeline. This kind of looks good in that movement. And like four, scrub, five, drop. Actually, let's come back to the start of the timeline. Let's get some drone footage going in there. And then as you can see with these custom buttons here, I could use this one. It's already set to zoom. So if I needed to zoom in right now, I actually need to zoom out and come here, come back into my edit basics here. It actually comes set up to with one of my favorite keys already stacked just into the software when it is that i'm editing talking head video a lot of times particularly if i'm shooting stuff like this on youtube or if i'm shooting client work like in this case i'll have to go through and chop down what it is that the client said this is where this thing comes in very useful so if i come in here what i'm going to do is this is where we start talking let's say that i could just chop that down to the end and then if i'm listening here what will happen is we might have a piece here i don't need that so i could blade that and then i want to cut out some of that i can use this to zoom in a bit and then if we come here this is all stuff that we don't necessarily need i want to stop here boom i do that again and then i come in and that's where she stops talking a blade there. And then this is where she's about to start back talking. And then, like I said, if I need to scrub with the wheel here, I could scrub faster. And then as she starts talking there, I can go back to the one frame and boom, cut to start. We're good to go. And then go back 10 frames zoom in a little bit there i need up to about right here blade again so i want to pick back up so you get the feel for it i can go through and then again with the hot keys it just makes it so much easier rather than having to command b and option bracket option bracket it's just one stroke two stroke one stroke two stroke instead of having to command plus right to zoom in it's boom boom and we're good there once you get the feel of it and particularly when you start working with two hands because like for here on the scrub wheel this is good for some movements and fine tuning if i want to go really fast i just do that but then i have both hands working at the same time and stuff becomes really faster you start to move in a different pace for your workflow there all right, next up, let's go into the color grading tab and show you how you could use this to optimize your color grading process as well. All right, this is a shot that we have here. So come in here, if I press two, it brings me into my color grading tab. It immediately brings me into some things here. It says global, as you could see here on the wheel. The first thing that I like to do is make a mask. So I'm going to drop this mask onto here. Come back to where my marker was. Uh, come into full screen. And as you can see, I can already tell this is looking really green. But let's just go ahead and use the scopes just to be certain. I'm going to get a good portion of skin, avoiding the eyes and the nose there or the eyebrows that should be good boom to exit full screen and yes as you can see this is way too much over onto the green side let's go into the color wheels here and i could just shift my tint which you could see on these controls i have a tint slider here if i move it up there you can see that my line has come back to the flesh let's go back to the 
draw mask but you could see how much that changed it there and that's just using my dial so i pull up these scopes here i want to go ahead and add some contrast into this frame here so the cool part is here if i want to add some contrast you see i have a contrast dial here if i just start to turn that up what is happening is that it is adjusting my highlights and my shadows simultaneously so you could see on the screen here both the shadows and the highlights are adjusting there and i could go in and push that up there that looks about good so toggle that on and off again we could see we've made a big difference to pull out some of the flatness so one of the things i like to do here is if i want to get that orange and teal look i will come in but i don't want it to affect the skin tones add a second set of wheels here i would add a color mask let's do this rough and dirty i'll mask out the skin there and then on the outside i would want to add some orange and teal instead of having to use the mouse what i would do is i would add some teals globally into the entire image you can add some teal into the image like that there come back out here global sat i would like to pull that down it's looking a little bit too saturated there that actually looks good and then let's come back over here color wheels my temperature is looking a little bit too warm so i can come in here and kind of cool it off a bit and we are kind of just doing this by eye and we're getting a bit of a cooler image there and like i said you could fine tune these things really well with this here and that gives you an idea on how you would color grade using the tools here and then i just want to show you a quick mention there if i pull up photoshop you could see it automatically pulls up photoshop there if i am in safari it automatically pulls up the safari page and you could use the scroll wheel to scrub all the effects in your software all that there there's so much more that you could do with it this was a sponsored piece by loop deck they did reach out to me however all the opinions are still my own and i really think once you take the time to set this thing up properly it is a great look for you links will be down below if you want to go ahead and check one out or purchase one click the links in the bio hit the subscribe button and the notification button and i will see you in the next video big up yourself peace